Colleagues, SB 59 anticipates the planned closing of the Fairview Developmental Center. It's located in the city of Costa Mesa in the county of Orange. The Department of Developmental Services is also closing two other centers, one in the county of Sonoma and one in the county of Tulare uh, in the city of Porterville. The target date for closure is 2021, but our health care and mental health services communities are very interested in this property and the potential for repurposing the 114 acres. I've been working with the impacted parties, including the Orange County Regional Center, the County of Orange, the City of Costa Mesa, NAMI, the National Alliance of Mental Illness, the Hospital Association, and other interested parties. We're asking the Department of General Services, as it uh, goes through its formal protocols for closing for you, that it complete an assessment of the site and facilities on the land to document the property's current condition and identify issues and limitations at the site and to meet and confirm with the confer, excuse me, with the city of Costa Mesa and the County of Orange throughout the transition process for any future use of the property. This is also being done by the County of Sonoma and I'm proud to have Senator McGuire as a co-author as well as Senator uh, Jim Bell, who is our mental health caucus uh, chair the facility was built in 1959. The city of Costa Mesa just incorporated in 1953, so the city grew up around it. More than 100,000 people now, and the county of uh, Orange has almost tripled, more than doubled its population since it was built. And so uh, we are now the second most densely populated county in the state, and a site like this is a treasure, and we just want to make sure that it is wisely transitioned for the betterment of the community. We, we are not uh, trying to disrupt DGS. We're just trying to make sure that the community repurposes it in an appropriate manner. And I, I respectfully request an I vote. Thank you, Senator Morlock. Uh, there's uh, some author's amendments. Did you want to yes, mention I, those? I apologize, that's right here. I will accept the amendments and, yes. Very good, thank, that, you, thank you for accepting your author's amendments. Thank you <laughs> for taking them. Um, are, are there any witnesses in support that you'd like to uh, introduce to us today? I'm not sure. Any witnesses in support? Kind of ministerial, so I didn't call in the troops. So, uh, you're a formidable force in your own right. Oh. <laughs> so, uh, is there any uh, witnesses in opposition? All right, seeing none, we'll bring the matter back to the committee for comments and thoughts. Anybody wish to offer a thought? No yes, Senator Mendoza. Um, Mr. Marnock, what? When you're talking about repurposing, do they already have a, does the city have a set plan on what they want to repurpose it for? The city has a general plan that it would like to have followed, but uh, Department of uh, Government Services can do what it wants to do with the process, but we're just kind of encouraging that it's a mutually agreed to approach. Uh, are, the, are the city plan to reuse it again for some sort of mental uh, health services of any kind, or they want to use it for something totally different? Um, they have it segregated into different components and about 25% would be a purpose for, for institutional. Uh, so that's still over 25 acres. So we don't know if we need all that much property, but we are working with them for at least that component. Okay. Um, I, I, it, bring, it gives me some concern. And the reason is the my experience of that city, uh, city of Costa Mesa has always had an a image of being very anti-immigrant. Uh, I know that years back and when I was in the assembly, there was a lot of issues and even recent where they they tend to be, um, 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 how should I say, they've been very mean-spirited in a sense where uh, they had a reputation of being like um, very uh, going after like day laborers who want to ask for work at uh, different places or they want to, uh, when it came to, um, I mean, they call themselves, they pride themselves on being uh, rule of law city and trying to go after immigrants. I mean, they, it's been really had that kind of image. So I'm, I'm fearful of, of uh, and this bill that says that they want to comply with whatever the planning, zoning, and development of the code. I mean, I don't know what kind of laws they might have on the, on the books at Costa Mesa. I don't know if, they, if that image still exists of them. I'm not sure. So I feel very, and I don't know if we, as a city, would li as the state, would like to give our power away because this bill, we're, we're changing the power from the state to to the local authority, um, to the local city. I, I, I'm very fearful of that. Uh, so I'm kind of hesitant on, on supporting this bill. Can you maybe, uh, is the city supporting this? Because it, it doesn't show that it supports it. We're working with the city. So did, did, not, did it not come from the city? No, this came from me. 
I'm just trying to work with all the parties. So we have lots of opportunities, Senator Mendoza. We've yeah. got uh, uh, no place like home. Yeah. And we have a growing homeless population in Orange yes. County, and we have a, a, a pretty large a mentally ill population. It's yeah. sort of the family secret in Orange yeah. County. Yeah. So we're seeing this as an opportunity to really address a, a significant need. Uh, I think your, your, your assessment might be close on the city of Costa Mesa. You work probably with uh, Assemblyman Alan Mansour, and he was our mayor uh, for a period of time, uh, retired uh, deputy sheriff from the county of Orange. And uh, he is now back on the council, so I should disclose that. But he's in the minority. Right. So the council philosophy is a little different be because of the three votes. So I, I don't know if your concerns would still be, you know, right. predominant or, or of, a, of a concern at this time. But I, I appreciate yeah. your history. No, I appreciate it. I just, I, when it came up, I wasn't sure. I said, well, who supports it? What's it for? And it really got my attention. I'm thinking, it's, it's great. I appreciate what you're trying to do. I do think that you want to set aside at least 25% of that property to be used for mental health services of any kind. I think that's right on. I think that's a good purpose. I mean, it's good to hear that the council might be in the different majority. That's great. I think that might be of recent. I don't know if it will shift back and then we're stuck with giving them this authority. I don't know. I, I So I am hesitant. I understand what you're trying to do. I'm in, I'm at a loss here because I just, I, I've, I've known the history of the city. I'm thinking, oh my goodness, is this the same city? Because it's, I remember the stories and, and so forth. I just, but I'm happy to hear that the majority has shifted. I just, um, I just don't know where, um, by the state kind of saying, okay, we, we, the state will no longer do what we want. We're going to go ahead and follow the code and rules and regulations of the city of Costa Mesa, and we're giving away our authority. I just, and I don't think that's what this bill is doing. It's just huh? saying that we should be, the city should be communicated with. So if I look at the wording, um, it says that. And meet and confer with the city of Costa Mesa and the county of Orange throughout the transition process for any future use of the property. So I don't think we're dictating that Costa Mesa's general plan override. We're just asking for collaboration. Um, it says the, any portion thereof are to conform to the city of Costa Mesa planning and zoning development code and must have a master plan. Well, let, me, let me ask, hold on just a second. I'm gonna ask our chief consultant to clarify that issue if I might, okay? But that the author, I think the author will appreciate that. Right. So, Senator Mendoza, I think the version that you're currently reading, that's no longer in the bill, that he just accepted amendments to take those provisions out of the bill. So now what the bill would do is, on page four of the analysis, so it would delete the current language which you're, you were mentioning in it. And now it would require uh, the director of DGS prior to offering the sell, for sale or lease of the property to complete an assessment, sort of what they did as a NOMA as well, and then have them confer with the local city. So they, there's no, nothing saying that they need to do any sort of anything in the general plan of the city of Costa Mesa. So now it would just be conferring with the local um, cities and not, okay. yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, I appreciate the clarification. Um, um, appreciate the work you're doing on this, uh, Senator. I just, I, like I said, I've had my hesitation on that one city, so I appreciate the, uh, the clarification. Thank you. So, uh, so if we can take a pause and establish our quorum and then we'll continue with this wonderful Great. conversation. So with the secretary uh, call the roll again. Absent members, Canella, Dodd. Here. Dodd here, Gaines. Here. Galgiani. Gaines here, Galgiani. Wesso. Present. Wesso here, Laura. <coughs> Portantino. Quarantino here. Okay, so we have a quorum. Uh, any other thoughts or comments on this bill for members? On, on this bill? On this bill. Yes, I, I do. I have some just questions. Senator Wesa. So when we did the analysis on this, uh, because it, it, it adds uh, what I might call a bureaucratic requirement on the sale, an additional bureaucratic requirement on the sale of land. So in, in addition to selling the property, the state would have to engage in this meet and confer type requirement. Can somebody explain what that process might be? Because is the state not currently communicating with the locals on the disposition of this land? It, uh, it is still going through its formal closure and is meeting all the requirements for okay. addressing the needs of the current residents. Uh, what we're trying to do, Senator Wayso, is sort of um, get situated so we can work with DGS to make sure that 
uh, we have a, 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 a helpful transition to something that's similar. Uh, we have, as I said earlier, we have a, a growing homeless. Can you define that, a, a helpful transition? Yeah, we'd, we'd like to, we'd like to make You need to continue to use this property for its current use. We'd kind of like to see a, a medical purpose, exactly. And why couldn't that happen? You're, you're concerned that if they put it in the market, just kind of just free market, somebody will come and buy it and use it for shopping center. That would be one concern, correct. So in, in essence, you're trying to lock in the use of this property. We're trying to at least be at the table. We can't tell the state what to do, but we'd like to make sure that uh, it, it, when looking at all the issues or opportunities, especially in a county that is the second most densely populated county in the state, where 114 acres is, is a rare, a rare opportunity. Uh, we, we just want to make sure that we're a part of their focus. So they don't, they don't forget that there are other constituencies that want to take care of the homeless, the mentally ill, uh, the, the drug dependent, et cetera. We just want to make sure that, that they've got us in their sights. And, and you understand this this could affect the value of the property in terms of whatever this, this It could go both ways, right. It could work against us as well. How would it work against you? Well, you know, if, 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 if we're calling attention to this property, I'm sure it could find some interesting offers from certain investors that might want to use the property. For mental health purposes? Probably even for development. It's located with a, with a golf course around it. It just seems odd to me that we would, uh, I mean, establish a different process. Yeah, I mean, I, I support the, the medical purpose <coughs> intent if, there, if we find that the area is deficient in that. But I think it would be, it would be helpful to at least re require some findings to be made if the area is deficient. And in, uh, in, in health care services, if the state's going to come in and kind of, this is, this is going to be... A, you know, the, these services or this process is going to come, I believe it's going to come at a cost to the state and there might be a reduced value of the property. And I think that that, that uh, would necessitate at least some findings to be made for the state to come in and help assist the locals with a deficiency in health care services. All right, I have Senator Dodd and I have Senator Berryhill. Senator Dodd. Maybe, Mr. Yep. Chair, if I could just close. Of course, uh, well. Close, but answer the question. Just let you know, Senator, that just this last Friday, I met with a lot of interested parties, the hospitals, the County of Orange, the mental health community. Uh, and so we're looking at a, a, a lot of opportunities to try to help this particular community uh, because we have big needs in the county. So I, I, I can pretty much guarantee that, but we're just trying to be proactive and collaborative. Very good. I have Senator Dodd and Senator Barry Hill. But uh, Mr. Sheriff, I just wanna, I just wanna finish. My, if I could, please, okay, with your permission. If, if this, the, the city has the power to zone, the state doesn't. I'm sorry? The city has the power to zone property. Yeah, but the state can override it. It doesn't matter what the general plan. Not once the state sells the property. That's once the property is sold, sold the city can zone the property. Right. To a private party, right. And, and that's the power of the city to, in, to zone, uh, you know, institutional medical and that would be the process by which the city kind of encourage, encourages investment or a use that is consistent with provide, providing the public medical services. So why can't they follow that process? Because the state goes through its own process. The state will first look for another agency within the state to see if it wants to use the property. Then it goes to the county and then it goes uh, like- and, and you want the state not to do that? Well, if I had a magic wand, that would be great. We could say, hey, we've got, I think, some ideas. But you're to trying to influence as much as possible the state doesn't As do much that. as a, one state senator can to, you know, to protect okay. a, a community where that's in need. Okay, thank you. Senator. No, thank you. All right, you're all done, Senator Wayso. Okay, Senator Dodd and then Senator Barry Hill. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I, I had some concerns about this too, but I, you know, because I have, you know, the Sonoma Developmental Center, and I know that DGS has a, an agreement there. Uh, you know, I have Napa State Hospital that's got surplus properties, and and I really do believe that the state does have 
uh, the responsibility, particularly big pieces of property in communities that are close to local government to collaborate. And so I, I really don't have any problem with this. Uh, Senator Waysa, with all due respect, I think that you know, if, if the state got in a process with a private developer and then the city or county came in and downzoned that property, that's kind of a, um, you know, th that's one way of handling, but I think handling it up front and having that communication. So I really appreciate the, uh, the chairman and staff uh, bringing these amendments forward. I think it, it, it makes sense. Frankly, I think these should be, this should be a requirement for all state properties and cities, but uh, for today, this is enough probably. <laughs> thank you, Senator Dodd. Senator Barry Hill. Yeah, thank you. Uh, just a couple uh, kind of thoughts. Uh, number one, uh, Senator McGuire is, is a co-author of this also. This is the basic same language that we had when we closed Sonoma, and everybody seemed to agree then. So I, I don't get what the, what the big deal is now. I think this is a, a good bill. I think it's a simple bill. And I think we should move it forward. We've got a motion. I think we should get her done. Thank you, Senator Barry Hill. Uh, Senator Morlock, I want to give you the opportunity to close. I, I just thanks thanks for the discussion. This has been great. I, I appreciate it. Um, last year, we were really fortunate to, to do Senate Bill 1273, uh, which repurposes Prop 63 funding. Orange County only had 10 psychiatric beds. And now we've already got the County of Orange building a facility in Garden Grove that'll add 22 more. And so what I found as a new senator is, hey, if you can kind of get the attention of a department with legislation, then positive things can happen because the Department of Healthcare Services went ahead and changed their regulations without my having to bring the bill to the governor's desk. And so we've got a, a hospital community that is extremely thankful uh, that we can meet this need. So I'm, I'm in the same spirit, just trying to work to try to improve the ability to help those in need in our county. And I respectfully ask for another question. <laughs> Thank you, Senator Morlock, for your close. Uh, Senator Wayso. You know, I, I have, a, I have a, a National Guard facility that was, or a, either a school was built around a National Guard facility or, or a National Guard facility was built in the middle of a high school in my district in Brawley. And it's just the oddest thing to have a bunch of tanks and armored vehicles and, and um, weapons right in the middle of a high school. And, and that, that property is being sold in that area, which is a good news. But there is no process to, uh, to, to work with the locals on that. And I think if, if it's good enough for, for Orange County, why couldn't, why couldn't we apply the statewide? Why, specific, why do we get so specific to a property? Uh, that's a great question, and I don't have the answer for you other than, you know, maybe I could look, work with you next year to do something uh, to, to... Well, and unfortunately, it's for sale, and, and um, you know, we probably won't have the option to wait till next year, but I just think it's somewhat a, a, a bad way to apply a policy to make it, to localize it to one parcel uh, when we could really handle how we dispose of property across the state in, in a way that would help achieve some of the local goals of communities. And I just wish that that could include other property. Yeah, my model was Sonoma County, so, but I, I agree with you. All right, uh, I, I wanna just uh, thank Senator Morlock for your work with our staff. I think that bill as amended is uh, much improved and I particularly appreciate your work with Senator Bell and Senator McGuire to uh, make it a bipartisan bill. So I thank you for your thoughtfulness. I, 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 I think that uh, we all wanna look for ways to consult with local communities wherever we can, federal, state property, but certainly in this case, we do have some control given that it's a state agency involved. And so with that, I'm looking for a motion from members. So, so. Senator Vidak has moved the bill. Uh, do pass as amended to appropriations. Would the secretary call the roll? Item two, SB 59, motion is due pass as amended to appropriations. Glazer. Aye. Glazer, aye. Barry Hill. Aye. Barry Hill, aye. Bradford. Aye. Bradford, aye. Canella. Aye. Canella, aye. Dodd. Aye. Dodd, aye. Gaines. Aye. Gaines, aye. Galgiani. Hill. Aye. Hill, aye. Wesso. Lara. Mendoza. Aye. Mendoza, aye. Portentino? Aye. Portentino, aye. Vidak? Aye. Vidak, aye. Senator, that enjoys enough votes to get out, but we're going to hold the roll open for another few minutes. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you, colleagues.